I'll do. I'll do. So we've had a little chat, me and Sean, back together. We're having a bit of recap, been about too long. Nearly 18 months. You're going to stay in touch now. Yeah. Were you nervous about this morning? Shit, weird. It, like, I've done all this before, but because it's not been a while. And yep. um, the, with the other ones I've done in the past, I've not, I don't know, it's been totally different, but when we talk, it's a bit more, I don't know, I seem to get emotional a bit more because it's, you know, the setting. So I was a bit nervous. Again, talking about ourselves is not always easy. Of course it's not. Um, people are worried about criticism. Yeah. What other people are going to say or think about them. Um, but at the end of the day, I know it's very easy to say this, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what other people think about mm. you. You know, you've done a lot of jail. That's out there in your other stories. Sean, there is a playlist. Uh, He's going to be starting his own channel. I'm going to help him do that. Sean Freeston. Um, some of the first interviews I've done, very sort of, you know, it did touch me. And the scary thing is, me and him, you could have swapped places very easily, you know, and, and that's what life is, in it? It's yeah. just... So we don't really know what we're going to talk about today. We are back together. We're going to do a catch up, uh, very much like uh, an old pair of trainers. This lad, uh, you know, not much to look at, but extremely comfortable to be with. <laughs> Cheers, pal. Right, since we last met, mate. First of all, some of some of these worth mentioning about Sean. Um, He come out of prison after doing a 10 stretch for serious offences. No doubt about that. Uh, he has got other criminal history, other prison sentences. How long after leaving prison was it before you got a job? Well, I come out, I had to go to a life for hostel in Leeds. So I couldn't really work there. So what I did is I started doing talks around Leeds colleges, unis, uh, schools, colleges, universities. So I did about 22, 24 talks just to get myself out there. I came back over to Lancashire three months later. I was back in work three, four weeks. How did you get a job? <sighs> Kept going around places. Going in, have you got any work? They, saw, they, they start to get to know you, the receptionist. You know, and they're like, no, nothing, or we'll get in touch. And I said, right, I'll see you next week. And I just kept doing that. If you want a job, guys, there's plenty of jobs out there. Yeah, for me, it's about having a sense of purpose. Yeah. Um, since I last saw you, have you changed jobs? Are you still in the same job? Oh, I've had a couple of different jobs. I'm back at a place, I'm twice now I've been back there. Um, it's like it's like a prison thing, I think, going back to the same, keep going back to the same yeah, place. Yeah, but they've had your bike. Yeah, so. they, well, they asked me, yeah, they, I got a message to go by. I quit walked out before Christmas and then yeah. I got asked if I wanted to go back so the time I quit I was going through some stuff mentally um, and the, the hardest thing about it is the mentality of when you've lived in prison for so long towards society rules and prison rules are totally different Correct. and even now I've not adjusted properly and I don't think I will. How long have you been out now mate? nearly six year I think um, and even now I'm not like I don't know it's, it's done something it's affected me and it affects people yeah, and, it does. and what's what what really annoys me most I don't know if I'm just rabbiting on and going off topic but when, when I hear this thing on the news or people saying oh prisons are like holiday camps or really like what do we might not get tortured or we might not get waterboarded and bread and water anymore the people that nobody wants in society the people that, that they don't want living next door to them are all in prison so it's not like an holiday camp society's i don't know the word people who want conforming to society that are damaging communities whatever they're all being put in one place so they're definitely not like fucking holiday parks 
That's for sure. All no, well, camps. well, here's the thing: when you go on holiday, you get to choose who you're lodging with. You yeah. get to choose when you have your meals. You get to choose when to have a drink and everything else. I understand, like yourself, that you know there's got to, it, it, going to prison is punishment. You're not, you know, the people be punished when you're there. Mm. Um, for me, they're sending too many people to prison that they need to be doing other things with. However, you checking you as an individual looking from outside in to all intents and purposes, you know, your neighbours or whatever, you get up and go to work every day. You've got a purpose. Mm. We have talked about this. <laughs> what is this place here? Is, is it a lot of engineering firms or? Yeah, where, manufacturing. Where is it? Yeah, well, Lancashire's always been known as like manufacturing and stuff like that, haven't they? So I've, I've said it, it's uh, evoked a lot of memories being where we are now. So we're looking on some <laughs> factories these stockpiles of steel you can hear machines and stuff like that 23 years in engineering uh like i said to sean a lot of jobs i didn't enjoy although there were some good people that i worked mm. with some dangerous jobs dirty jobs long hours however if you want things in life you know you, you need to be working to earn yeah. your money you need to have a purpose you know if, if, if you just sat at home thinking, yeah, I'll let the government pay me or whatever, then the worst times in my life are when I haven't been working. Yeah. It yeah. just... The way, I, the way I see it there is that sort of thing is, like, you hear people, especially ex-cons, and it's... And this ain't a dig at ex-cons. This isn't me thinking I'm better than anyone else, because I'm far from it. My flaws are plenty of them. I'm a miss, but... You, Lancashire, that's one of your flaws. Yeah. Um, well, you know, <laughs> being on the side of Pennines. Anyway, no, but it's on, like... So, so before I went to prison and I did security and different stuff like that, that's what I was good at. I've come out of prison. I'm not allowed to do that no more. Do you know what I mean? I'm not yeah. allowed because you've got to have your badge. I'm not allowed you're that. You're in doors so, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's doing different stuff like Calder Stones. I worked at med the mental hospital. I did all sorts. I loved it. But I'm not allowed to do that now. And I think a lot of the problem with a lot of ex-cons is... They either, want, they, are, they either want to do what they used to do yeah. and they're not allowed no more or they look at the wages and go, well, I used to earn so much before or I'm not working for minimum wage. That is the problem. It's like society now is people want the best of everything. Like, oh, it's minimum wage, I'm not getting out of bed. Why should I get out of bed for that? Because it's pride. Purpose. It's purpose. Purpose and pride. If do you know, it's... You, it's not about what you're getting up for, it's about getting up and having that drive. Because if something serious happens in your life and you can't even get out of bed to get a job, how are you going to deal with something major if you're just going to quit or be defeatist? I, I, again, looking at you, right, so people will look, you're working, missus, yeah. lad, you know, a normal family. However, uh, it's not all plain sailing, is it? <sighs> not at all, no, it's... Uh... I, I think I've had to look at myself lately a lot um, because, like I say, I, I, I'm, I'm drilled differently. So I have routine. For example, I come home from work and I do the same stuff. I take my boots off at the door, I put the kettle on, I roll the fag while the kettle's boiling, I go back door, I have my fag, come in, pour my brew and go sit in the living room. I do that. If I come in and... I was going to say a name, but I don't know if she, she likes that or not. But the missus, if the missus is hoovering and messing about in the kitchen, I can't, my head, I get like, I'm it's not, weird. I'm not laughing, I'm not laughing, not, laughing, mm -hmm. I, I know what you mean. It's like, my routine's just like flipped and I'm like, it's weird. So there's certain things that I'm still ingrained in prison and it's not, it's not a bad thing, but... There is differences. It's hard for for the missus to understand sometimes where I'm coming from because I see I've, my life's been different. That do you know? It's, and it's like with the boy, I'm I'm strict, and and I'm, I'm strict. And it's not because I don't. It's not out of anything bad. I'm not, and I wouldn't say I'm strict. Straight, he gets everything he wants. Do you know? Like tonight yeah. we'll be watching UFC. We have that relationship. But I'm just frightened of him slipping off that edge, or so you want to keep I'm just him trying to track. teach him. And but yeah, 
I'm, I know I'm a bit hard well, sometimes. You're the best person to teach your kids mm. about everything, because let's face it now. Um, I saw, again, it might sound off topic this, but I don't think it is. When you're talking about kids, so I saw some article about defibrillators being put in schools. So uh, people were going on about lockdown and COVID mm. and having jabs and health. You know, they're concerned about that, which is fair dues, you know. However, when I'm in Little Alton and I used to go and pick my daughter up from school, 10, 11, 12, all of them, these kids coming out, the first thing they do when they get out of school, start vaping. Yeah? <gasps> Uh, all of them. That's all I see kids around us now going to school vaping. Wow. Right? So anyone who doesn't think that's going to impact on people's health. Local park near us smoking weed. I've heard it, it from youngsters and plenty of other people. It doesn't hurt anything. I know people who smoke weed for years. The stuff that I used to smoke and the stuff that is about now mm -hmm. are two different things. Yep. If anyone thinks their child smoking weed at 14, 15, 16 ain't going to run into problems in the future, psychosis, poor mental health. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Gas, nitrous oxide. You know, when did that become a thing? Again, anyone who thinks that, you know, is not going to harm anyone. It's not anyone. supposed to go in your body, is it? No. And then... Well, we get on to one of my favourites then, energy drinks. Yeah. I'm guilty of that, so, I'm bad. Well, it is a thing. You know, you've got everyone, uh, you've got your Monster Energy, your yeah. Red Bull, at the echelon, at the top of sport. Yeah. Uh, does it sound posh then? Yeah, They're at the top of sport sponsoring, but then you've got The Rock. You know, a lot of people look up to The Rock, Fit yeah. Lad, all that, his films, yeah? Promoting his own energy drinks. Energy drinks read chemicals well, Fury's and doing stimulants. It, it? That, that <laughs> is it, though. That is all it. Yeah. You know, if you care about people's mental health or whatever, yeah. don't be pushing Physical and health. selling any drinks. all about that. Yeah, of course it is. Anyway, I digress. So the best person to sort your lad out mm. and prepare him is you. Yeah, so it's like... So I know that I'm I'm a very complex person. Um, I don't know if I've got some bipolar. I know I'm a complex person. So I have to remember sometimes that my my the way I do things is not normal for them. You know, what I see is seen different. You know, so there is a lot of there is there is a lot of challenges of when you come out. Um, supermarkets, I'm only just able to go into Asda and not kick off and get stressed. She hates it. She'll go Asda. Now I'm here, she'll shoot off to Asda. Because <laughs> I don't let her go on her own because it's like... I don't like her going on her own because I think it's packed. A man's supposed to push the trolley. I'm supposed to bag the stuff up for her. I'm supposed to carry the bags. So I don't like the fact that she works hard and then she goes... To she goes and does that. Well, what do you but stress about it? What do you stress it's, about it? So it's, I'm not as bad now. She's always like, no, no, but I'm getting a bit better. I went on my own last week and I didn't do too bad. But it was loads of people. Um, do you know the biggest thing? Self-righteousness. That you can be walking down an aisle, somebody will come round, walk towards you and expect you, you have to move. Um, people bump into you. They don't apologise. You'll have two people in the middle of a loud just talking and you stood there like, excuse me, excuse me. Shop. I'm going to have to take you shopping, mate. I get stressed. I'm, I'm a, exactly Cause... opposite to you, me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, when I'm shopping, yeah. She's chilled. She I, 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 I enjoy shopping. I take my time. If I want four things, I'll go up and down every aisle and just have a look. And people watch. And if someone's blocking aisle... Just say, excuse me, I yeah. move the trolley. I am uh, a proper girl yeah. when I shop. I enjoy it, honestly. Get out of the That's car. That's not the bad Just, thing, though. No, it, it's not. Um, but you're talking about that, so uh, everyone has to go shopping unless yeah. you do it online. Yeah. And for you, it's complex. You're thinking about too many things. But it's like we'll do something and we'll go like... We'll get like halfway down the supermarket of going up and down the aisles and she'll say, I forgot some peppers. I'll go get them. 
come back and it'd be like, oh, I forgot to get the cream. That shouldn't even bother me. But I'm like, why don't we do it as we're going up and down? Why we... Mate, I'm a nightmare. And she says, and she's right. So I've had to... So it's stuff like that that... When I get challenged on it, I might not like it, but I'll think about it and then... I have to realise that I have to adapt. I can't be too... I'm too regimented. I've got to do things at certain times. If it's not... Like going out anywhere. What time are we going for a meal? Well, we'll book the table at five. So what time am I ringing the taxi? I don't know. Them sort of things really get to me. And then if the taxi's not there at ten to five, I'm like, where it should be here. Why are you not ready? Why is not... I get all frustrated. It should be a nice thing. We're going for a meal. But it's not running in routine <laughs> like prison that's prison i i think a lot of people you you i'm going to say this as well because people know what you mean i don't give a fuck mm. if anyone takes offense you, you're probably not wired right no I know lots of people who are not wired right they get on you know looking at you now you know people might be tuning in now see sean as he what's he talking about fucking supermarkets <laughs> for yeah but that it's that is just, but the other thing again i always bring it back to this if if we're not helping people, mm. you know, they're just going to go back to crime. Yeah. There's going to be more victims, isn't there? Yeah. I think, while I've mentioned that, we don't need to go into specifics, but no. from our trio of videos, mm -hmm. um, it became obvious to you through messages and that, that you've helped people yeah. just by telling your story. Yeah. So ex explain, you, you know, because that took a bit of you getting your head round. I understand it now. It took me a while. But you explain from your point of view, you know, what what you're not sort of seeing or thinking. Or maybe you are now, but when mean? we did the interviews, you didn't know it might affect people. Right, yeah. Uh, so, so... Are we on about my victim? If we'll talk about that, maybe that's well, well, some. You, all right. So, so that. So we'll go on that. I don't want to go too much because if he watches this, I don't want to bring feelings up. I know I've I've ruined his life, but it's summer. One of the biggest things I had when I come out was what I'd done to my victim. Now, the person I went to prison for the first two times, I'll see that fucker in hell. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so he ain't got he ain't got away from me. Yep. Yeah. Even if he is dead, he hasn't got it. So, I have no remorse. I have no iota to what I did to that person. I didn't do enough. But my victim who went to prison for the last time was innocent. He was just trying to help me. He was just trying to do something nice. And I've impacted his life massively. So I felt, I felt guilt. I genuinely felt guilt. I know what it's like to be a victim that when my brother died or when my brother was murdered i know what my dad seen what my dad went through what i went through i was in prison and i couldn't even grieve properly because i couldn't show any emotion uh, i couldn't show that things were bothering me on the wing because uh, people prey on it people see the vulnerability and of course they do. that's when they don't attack you but they may you, you want to borrow stuff because you're you not allowed to show emotion in no. prison are you and no. that, that comes for staff as well yeah so you know or you're not supposed to no, so having all that, that was built up anyway inside. So that, that was always, I always used that stuff with my brother because it was always there and I hadn't grieved and that anger was always there. That was my anger when I needed to lose my temper. That was, it, I was quick because it was the anger already there. But I felt fucking really, really, really bad for what I did to my victim. And also his family, his friends, other people. So I went on a different podcast and we did the podcast and we're all right. And then somebody put a comment thinking they knew about the night when I attacked my victim and they thought they knew about me in prison and they were saying different stuff and it was wrong. And a message come up from a victim, like questioning the guy, you know, he was wrong or what have you. And then- At the time he was a friend, weren't he? Like when said, I, I was when trying I to help him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was. He let me let me stay in his flat. And people, if you watch the other episodes, you'll see it. I don't want to go too much in. I did the scummiest thing that somebody could do. 
date and it, there's no and i never ever like people couldn't understand it when i were inside and i was like yeah like they'd go on about ipps and i'd be like i deserved it that wasn't me being like this i don't know what the words are because i'm not good at fancy words but i was being honest i deserve what happened you know because what i got is nothing compared to what he's got to deal with so anyway, we tried setting up restorative justice a few times. Restorative justice, for people don't know, is when a victim and the perpetrator come together with police or people that work alongside the police uh, to talk and go through stuff. So I tried to do it while I was inside. It didn't, it didn't come to fru 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 fruition. Fruition, yeah. Then I come out, I tried again, then I tried, and then he, he, he agreed then. So we did a lot of work, like my side here with restorative justice in with, with that side. And unfortunately, not through me, but people in the restorative justice thing didn't help him the way they should. And he closed down, he didn't want to do it. But after seeing that comment that he'd put with the person on, on the YouTube, I started messaging him and we was going to do a live that would have been the worst thing to do but the biggest thing out of it all was he said he forgive me and i can't accept that yet i Did still he... can't and does that sound bad that i can't accept that no i i, I, I no, can't no, accept obviously, it because you, you know what he did to i him. haven't you know like I... you say you, an ipp you got an ipp for the proper reason yeah, you know, it it was supposed to be handed out the IPP sentence for people who didn't want li a life sentence, but the crime was serious enough. Yeah, and so like you said, you got that. Yeah, you know, you could have taken a guy's life. Yeah, and you're struggling with a fight that he he said he's forgiven me, but I, I owe him. I still owe him a lot more. Yeah, you see, you see, but I ain't got a right to say that though, have I? It's... No, but f f from his point of view. If if he if it helps him move on, if you live with something like that, if you're aggrieved mm -hmm. all your life at something that's happened that you can do nothing about, you know, you don't sort of give yourself a break because a lot of people don't, then you know it's just going to be something that will be there forever, won't it? Yeah, I think I used the wrong word though when I was saying I can't accept it. I don't deserve it. I feel I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I haven't proving myself enough for I don't know so it's not that I can't accept it's I, I can't you know I, I don't feel I deserve it so it's it's. I've still got a lot of stuff to, to go through I've still got to grieve for my brother I've not even had I've not even grieved for him yet because it's like I've come out and my life's just been it's going it's going because do, do you know what it's just, uh, this is how it goes isn't it mate you, you've said that so what what come into my head? I was going to say to you, have you thought about bereavement counselling? So people think bereavement counselling is something that happens immediately. You lose mm -hmm. a loved one. Uh, it can be at any time, but something else that is very obvious now is unless you go out for something, mm -hmm. i.e., you go to your doctor and say, you know, this is problematic. I've tried it. This is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Things don't come easy. No. Now the NHS. As good as it is, uh, and I'm grateful, obviously, still being here. Uh, yeah. As good as it is, it's on its knees. you know, it is on its knees. And if, if you're seeking stuff like that, like counselling, therapy, psychology, mm. seeing psychiatrists, whole mental health thing, you have to go out and chase it because it ain't going to come to you. It is not. No. Um, now, whether you, I, I don't know whether there's other things you can do or to help yourself come to terms and that, that again might be some of the yeah favorite. what I've done is so again it's like it's easy to be defeatist it's easy to say I can't do this because of this it's easy to justify why we sometimes don't want to put ourselves through painful stuff or I'm not picking your thing I'm just I was just moving you I didn't want you to think I was damaging your car. car any damage oh no you, no you yeah. answer to her mate I got in fucking deep shit last night <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so what was it? What was it you said, and what did I say? You were on about your missus or something. 
Uh, oh, right, you, you'd ask because she, cause she, she'd been in hospital Sunday oh, and you said, how is she? she went, yeah. I said, oh, well, she's nagging, so she's all right. She's getting better. Yeah. But then that triggered made, you then, didn't it? Yeah, I made some comment and uh, <laughs> I'll ask. It'll still be ongoing when I get home. So please don't pull a car no, to I pieces. Won't, I won't, apologies. I was just moving a bit of dust. Yeah, so nice. so what I've done is, I've, like I said, a doctor is... All they want to do is give you medication. Correct. I don't want that. I've done it all before, and I can't. I don't want to be chemically. I don't know what the word is. No, I know what you're saying. But the waiting list is six, nine months, maybe a year. So I've then done a referral to a thing called Minds Matter, um, and anyone can do it. You do it online. Is that a charity? Uh, yeah, it's an organisation, a mental health organisation. But literally, you only put a couple of details in on the online, yeah. and then someone contacts you. Do you know? So if people are suffering, you don't want to see your doctor and speak to your doctor. Fill it out. Sometimes it's easy to talk to people over the phone that you don't know as well. Yeah. You know, so quite possible. So yeah, so I've done that because there is stuff I need to work on, and I maybe have convinced fool myself that. I've got out, I'm a different person, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, you know what, I'm still, I've still got issues from, from prison because I was away for so long, trying to adapt. It's very difficult. It's not easy at all. Well, you, you Not just overcome. for me, for others, Sam. Yeah, of course it is, but you've overcome a, a lot of things that people struggle with. I think a lot of it is determination and purpose again to bring it back. Yeah. Working, you know, to all intents and purposes, you're working, you've got a family, uh, your missus works. Yeah. You know, so potentially together, at some point, you might decide you want to move, get an house, yeah, that's, change that's job. What I look it, at, yeah. You know, you, they're, they're still things that are alive, aren't they? Yeah. If that's your purpose, you can do that. But, I, yeah, and I can't, I can't, like, when you say, like, purpose, determination, I'll give you an example. Last week at work, Everything was going wrong for us. It was just fucking, it was mayhem. And I'm not lying, six or seven times, I were at the point where I was like, right, go get your bag from the office and walk out, go home. I don't want to do this shit. It was horrible. The only thing that stopped me was my missus and boy. My boy mainly. If they, if I, didn't, if I wasn't in this relationship, I probably wouldn't be in that job now. And I've got to be real because I'm still flawed. I've still got them up, some of them old behaviours of fuck it, press that button, I can go somewhere else, I can get a job easy enough. No, that's not the right thing to do. But what stopped me was thinking of the missus and the boy. That's who it affects him. Yeah, of course it is. He, he, I, whatever I do affects him. That's, well, well, listen, you know, if, they, if they're suffering, like your last in hospital, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'll pretty much take anything on myself and stuff. However, if the missus and daughter aren't good, it destroys me, you know, you have to work at it. That yeah. is, it, say it's a distraction, you know what I mean, don't yeah. you? That, I don't mean in a bad way at all, I wouldn't have it any other way, but it, it makes things difficult. It yeah. makes just doing normal things difficult. Yeah. You know, um, I, I sometimes become unreliable you know, if my missus is having a bad time, like she did, yeah. uh, a few months ago, I forget things, you know, I forget to phone somebody. I'm supposed to... <laughs> yeah, be, yeah be, no, because... No, this is the same as me. No, yeah, I'm laughing because it's the same. Yeah, of course he does. He, he, you know, the ones you care about, that that's where it is, your hard. Mm. But, you know, end of end day, um, you've got to be in it to win it, mate, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I am still flawed, and... And that's, that's probably, that's, that's a good thing is the fact that I've got people that rely on me now and depend on me, you know, and, and like, with, especially with the missus being away, I, and I wanted to say too much, but I've not been the best. Um, I've been suffering, my mental health's not been good last few months, two, three months maybe. Uh, my manager's helped me a lot. There you go. She really has. Um, Obviously, Paul, who's my best mate, he's the ex-prison officer. Yeah. Um, soul of the earth. It's, so I've, I've got my support networks, but I've been suffering inside. I've not been my right. I've felt my mood's been low. 
I know what it is. I go through these stages. It's like like a depression. Um, but then these these are very real things that affect us all, innit? I <laughs> cost a living. That that Going in itself. On the table, yeah. Bills. Yeah. So it's like you just you're just working, aren't you? You are just, just to working. survive. Yeah. And it's like 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 the I went yesterday to to go. I went up to the butcher shop. Um, to get her a butter before I went to work and the woman said, oh, so you got, so you always have a chat, you know, I always keep talking. Um, and you know, I've just got that personality where I just like rabbiting on. So anyway, she said, oh, you got, you going away on, on holiday anywhere or? I said, no, I can't afford it. I said, and that's bad, isn't it? That two full-time people are working full-time. Can't afford an holiday like. Do you know what? I because I the prices of everything is, it's fright. It's literally scary that I'm only on minimum wage, and I'm thinking I need to make sure I get these hours. I need to make the cost of living's gone mental. Yeah, of course it has. For other people, shit in other parts of the world affect us. I, t I tell you what, I, I saw something again, which is to do with that. That I thought, do you know what? That makes perfect sense. And somebody, you know, in power, whoever it be, whatever political mm. party it be, should do something about. And what it said was, if you and your missus have lived somewhere for six years, yeah, and for instance paid seven hundred and fifty pound rent for six years, then somebody should give you a fucking mortgage for six hundred pound a month. Yeah, you've proved yeah. you can pay. Yeah, for six years, and that that should be a thing. It well, should that... be as difficult to get mortgages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when I were in prison service, fucking hell, we private rented. It was extortionate rent, and what we got for his money was not a lot. No. It'd have been better and cheaper having my own house. Yeah. But making that step, it, it weren't possible no. at that time. And you've got to have a deposit, and it's, it's. Yeah. There's no way of helping people get on that ladder and people being getting successful in that way. So you have to find other ways, don't you? Well, you, know, you have to, you have to sort of, I don't know. You need some space, you know. Like you said, kids now amuse themselves, don't they, with social media and playstations and Xboxes and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, does your, I know, it's not off topic, really. Does your missus like get some space or whatever? Do you think, or have you not thought about that? No. Do you think she'd like no. some? Do you think there's a way of doing that? Oh yeah, there's things I could. It's and it's not. I don't know if we necessarily need space. Um, like I've got my own little hobbies that I do. That I take, can take myself away. My metal detecting. I've just started wild camping. Yeah, moving swiftly on the camping. I'm happy with the metal detecting. I don't want to go there, mate. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I have another friend. <laughs> so anyway, so we so another eighteen months is it, pal? It's been nice seeing no, you. No, I'm joking. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, no, I think. So she, metal well, detecting, what I'm not a fisherman. When I went through a particularly bad, tough time of my life, mm -hmm. for a couple of years, not not all the time, but I went fishing with my mates. After a couple of bodged attempts yeah. at fishing on Trent and getting totally frustrated, do you know what I decided, what I liked about fishing? Nothing. <laughs> the peace and quiet. Yeah. Being with good friends and being mm. able to chat. So... Metal detecting, I take it all back. I'm thinking, exactly you know, you're in it. country, bit of peace. Yeah. So I apologise. No, it's all right. And I would say him, and then, but it is mainly just for that. Like me and him go, and we just. Do you go with your lad? No, it's not his thing. I go with my pal, but again, he's never been in trouble. Um, sensible, kid, same age, similar sort of personality to me and works and all that it's mainly we go away we may not even do we will do some metal detecting but the vast majority of the day is stood talking then we'll walk and then we have another watch it's about it's just chatting about everything from relationships to work yeah. to it's venting yeah um you know yeah, and then it's everyone, she everyone doesn't, definitely needs that as well yeah yeah but coming back today you just said something again that's made me think Space. And I, 
Yeah, it's just made it's me not think. It's not something to beat you. No, no, beat no, yourself no, up boy, about. no, no, no. It's, it's circumstances, so, isn't it? So but I, I think my missus, right, mm. you know, uh, she's doing a lot for my daughter right now. Very crafty lass. I don't mean sneaky, yeah. although she is. Yeah. So, crochet and knitting, stuff like that. Wow. So I can see her, she just gets zoned out. Boom. That's good. Yeah, and I'm happy to leave her doing that yeah. or whatever. You just, it doesn't mean necessarily out of the house or whatever. Yeah. It's just quiet time and it no. is very difficult to make that when he's, when you're living in the same gaff together. Yeah. Can't afford to do anything. Yeah, so we do do stuff. So we do go out for meals and we'll go out to Blackpool for a week. and Oh, sorry, Blackpool, for those that don't know. It's just a way we say it up north, isn't it, Blackpool? Um, so we do little things. Like next week she's going over to Yorkshire for a week to her cousin. So that would be nice. But, yeah, you just made me think something there that I need to look at myself about giving her a bit more her time maybe because all welcome. she does is work you're thank you you're welcome but genuinely you've just again made me think of some of well, that it's, 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 it, it is very difficult uh, I don't know which knob it were it might have been Richard Branson somebody said you know I'd rather be rich and depressed than poor and depressed M money for now is becoming more of an issue for a yeah. lot of people um, I don't know 50 somethings haven't returned to work after lockdown a lot of them have decided they want retirement mm. or whatever I don't think that's going to do anyone good you know having that purpose again uh, so, so can I ask you a question yeah of course you can and I don't know if because it's something that I'd like to ask how did you adjust when you left the prison service from having, like, as in work wise, from being a prison officer, for working to all my life, in society, do you know what I mean? In yeah, right. So, I was on sick for 11 months. Uh, I had a bad shoulder, my head went definitely went west bad. Um, I struggled. Uh, I've all, always worked up to that point. Um, everything you talk about felt worthless. Felt mm. I should be out earning money. Uh, if we couldn't afford to buy it little in summer, uh, felt shit about that. I felt shit about not being right in nut because I could see it affecting them. Yeah. Um, I, I probably think I had absolutely, other than taking Stephen out four times a day with Terry, who was my counsellor or one of them, he was told fella down landing next squad with his dog. We started once a day, twice a day, three times a day, four times a day, oh, wow. 20 minutes, half an hour, taking dogs out, just vent, like yeah. you see, vent. Yeah. He had some trauma in his past that he'd never talked about, being a squaddy, being in some naughty places, mm. you know, seeing things that no one should see. Um, but I struggled. I struggled. Uh, Probably until 219, so 216, 217, 218, 219. When my first book came out in 218 on TV, Victoria Derbyshire with Chloe, who were lovely. How are you now? I'm feeling much better the last couple of months. I weren't. Yeah. Um, you know, it was work, work, work. Now, keep myself busy, lots of projects on go. Um, but you can look back at that now. Our last were very understanding, and you know it's up to me to support her now. You yeah. know, in her employment or whatever. But yeah, I make no bones about it, mate. And like you, me now, the things that are getting me down, apart from close at home, like we've said, is what it costs to do anything. Yeah. You know, um, still got a mortgage for ten years. Slam seventy. I'm. I'm not fretting and losing sleep or it mm -hmm. but i can't say yeah that i don't and only because i i don't want to leave them i i think if i if i'd have snuffed it september mm. 4th last year been left would nothing. our lass have been able to pay for house you know would they have been kicked out would they have had to sell that that is the concern isn't it yeah and yeah so i'm probably at best place from 2.19, it got a little better, certainly this. But lockdown again, going back to it. 
Oh, yeah. Not good. I know we weren't actually locked in as houses, mm. and I could have gone out on my motorbike every day or whatever, but you fall into line and do things. Wow, it's impacted a lot of people, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm really... I'm actually grateful for this relationship that I'm in, because... Oh, I thought you meant about me and you then, bud. Yeah, of course, <laughs> obviously. But it was like, and you said there, like, being, a, like, if you, if you wasn't here, that when she were in hospital Saturday night, that was probably one of the worst nights I've had in my life. It was fucking horrible. Because I, you have all these things in your head, though. I can feel myself getting emotional now, yeah. thinking about it. Yeah, of course you do. Um, We don't. We take. We we sometimes take over. We take people for granted if yes. we're not feeling ourselves. If we're not okay. feeling right, we take other people for granted. And I I've, I've been doing that and not deliberate, but it was like that on Saturday just made me realize a little bit more how fucking precious this relationship is. How precious our lives are, you know. Oh, you're going to make me emotional now as well. Um, you see, what you've just said there, I actually thought about this this morning when I was coming out of the house, yeah? So, you sometimes think, you know, you've got no assets or you ain't got this or other. The, the most prized possession you can have is a great relationship. Kids. Health over wealth, innit? Absolutely. So, do you know what, mate? That might be a good place to stop for now. Unless you've got more to say. It's entirely up to you, but I'm, I, I don't mind. Uh, well. But that, that, that is a health over wealth and your loved ones. Yeah. You sometimes forget, you know. Because we're thinking I, about I can't finances. buy our last. I couldn't yeah. buy another one of her mm. or my daughter. Yeah, I couldn't. You, you're not, you're not going to get that, you know. Although, you know what I mean when you're saying prized asset, don't you? Yeah. I don't. It's not, it's not something you've bought or whatever, yeah. a possession, but you, you yeah. can. But everything else seems to overtake it, don't they? Like you said, the, the cost well, yeah, of you living. Forget. Your supermarket, you forget going around your fucking supermarket yeah. when you're kicking off or thinking of kicking off. Yeah. You are yeah. right. So, yeah, so, so it's little things like that. So, I've come back down now. We're able to right continue. Now. Good. Good. It, Good. That's fresh water if you want a drink. I could do with a drink. I, that's I, fresh. I was, well, I was going to get us a brew, weren't I? But well, that, that's fresh. So, so, yeah, so it's... I can't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to start letting things... Don't interrupt. Go on. Remember last time somebody told me off for guzzling on one of your videos. <laughs> they said, you know, if, if you're going to have a drink, can you take it off camera? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on now. See, we've interjected a bit of you, yeah. man, which is always yeah. good. So, and we're back in the room. So yeah, so it's like them, them sort of things of like, as long as he's, long as we've all got food in our belly, the roof over our head, we've got clothing. He's got what he wants. Do you know what? What else? What else is important in life? Well, you know, we're back in the room now, aren't mm. we? Yeah, we've done the doom and gloom, and actually... You, you always do this to me. Act, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> actually, we're looking at it now, we're looking at it now, and, and I'm the same. My, my concern is for them, yeah? yeah? Um. But yeah, if, you know, you be there for them, and then everything else is secondary. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. Uh, I think another big thing that I've done is again it might be a bit extreme again i'm a complex person i've started cutting people out out of my life including close family members because of the negativity um because their life may i don't know whatever's going on there seems to be a lot of again even in my family people don't like to see others succeeding doing good and this bitching and there seems to be a lot of that in society now, doesn't it? Where it's backstabbing and bitching and slagging each other off. In, so instead of thinking now, that, you know, maybe that's something for me to achieve mm -hmm. or look up to. What, look, um, envy is 
probably the worst emotion on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had a friend, I haven't seen him for a long, long time. But when the National Lottery first dropped, he dropped 3.2 million. Yeah? 3.2 million. Ooh. So, uh, I, we w we weren't social then. We had been in the past with his yeah. missus. He ended up splitting up with his missus. Get this, he split up with his missus about 18 months before. He had kids. He sorted his missus out. I He, he didn't say at the time, but I pretty much think he gave her half. Mm. Yeah? So, good on him. So, we weren't social at the time, although we had been. We were still friends, but it's one of them that you don't see them. And... Yeah. So, uh we hooked up, can't remember how we hooked up. Um, he says, do you fancy going for a drink? I says, yeah. So, uh, Bank Street, Sheffield, Three Cranes. I don't know whether it's still there. Anyone who lives in Sheffield. It's a boozer I went in in my youth right. when we used to do the old-fashioned pub club. A while ago, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, bro. Nice one. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, it was a while ago. Thanks for that, Sean. Anyway, can I get back to my story yeah, now? Yeah, sorry. Get back to my story. Three came, so we met outside, walked in. What are you drinking? I have a pint of lager. Get me a pint of lager. Looked at me. All right. Yeah? Long silence. Might not have been that long. He says, you're the first person since I won this money who's bought me a pint. You know, he says, I have walked in pubs and people have walked in before me and stopped. Mm -hmm. um, he says, the amount of negativity that's come in my life since I won this money is incredulous. Um, so, yeah, he says, do you feel jealous? He says, absolutely fucking jealous. Give me 3.2 million. Mm. He says, but, you know, do you wish... I says, of course I'm not going to wish you bad. Do you shit? And, you know, I says, if you want to give me 100 grand right now, I'd be... Sweet, happy. yeah. <laughs> and um, it was a couple of years ago I last saw him. He's he's doing all right. He, he didn't go to his head. He still has a good relationship with his ex-missus and kids. Um, he invested, I can't remember what, you know, whatever, but... Mm. Yeah. That, 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 I, that night... You know, very much, a, I wish that, if, if you could have recorded it, you know, somebody who's won 3.2 million is done right by the ex-missus and yeah. everything. And fucking his world crumbled. Absolutely fucking crumbled. That's mad, isn't it? That's, it is crazy. It's, it is, it, for me, jealousy, envy, they've got to be the yeah. worst. Yeah. You know. Whereas if everyone got behind each other, same as this social media YouTube shit, <laughs> if people got behind each other, pushed, taught, Teach each other. It's like people would be the more people would be successful instead of like that greed and envy and jealousy and that. If, if people, if so, I'm going to say some man. I don't know if again people might not agree. If you're feeling jealous about someone, it's not about them. It's about you. You're not happy with something within you. Do you know what I mean? You're not happy. If you can be envious and jealous and wish bad things, it's because you're not happy within yourself. Because if you are happy within yourself and you're living life for yourself, it shouldn't matter what someone else is doing. You should be happy. Like, fair play to you. Do you know, it's yeah. there's a lot of this jealousy and, and this social media is doing that as well. It's, it can be very toxic. It's a very toxic. Hell. It is. Uh, and like I said earlier, you're probably one of the only ones that you've not been embroiled in any beef or drama. These big ones, all of them have been embroiled in some point. My nan always used to say, my nan always used to say, be yourself. Mm. You know, just just be yourself. You do get your found out thing. otherwise. Yeah, go well. Yeah, you know, uh, do your own thing or whatever. Yeah. For me... This, like meeting you, meeting people, chatting with people and that. I love meeting people. I uh, love talking to people. Um, like, you couldn't get your head round. Who knows how many people you help just by being open and honest and getting emotional. Yeah. You know? Um, it does help people. Lots of people. The sort of comments 
you know, and some of them stick with you. It's like, you know, th that's me. That That is me. Yeah. You know, you know, there is hope or whatever and stuff like that. And yeah, and... And, but that's another thing that I've had to learn to get used to is emotion because I've been like a robot for so long of not showing emotion whether it's happiness, sad anger is probably one of the only emotions that I, show, I showed a lot of inside now it's like like it's like stuff's been unlocked in my brain you know and I watch some of it and I feel tears and coming. it's like but it's a good thing, because now I'm allowing myself to be me. I'm not bothered with what people think. I know who I am, so I'm not bothered if people see me cry or people see me sad or talking about stuff that happened to me when I was a kid. <clears throat> That's part of me and it's who I am, so it's I have to use that to better myself, you know, or try steer or... Emotions are not a bad thing, are they? And not, we should do, especially as men, we should be... Not at all. The stig there's still that stigma about men and mental health. I, I, Very let, bad that... Let, let me tell, tell you this. Well, there is, we'll come back to that. Mm -hmm. Remember stigma and mental health yeah. with men. Remember that. I I had a chat with Ollie, and um, I, I don't know it off the heart, but the prison service has changed its policy to do with corruption. Um, and basically... Mm. The, the policy, right, I don't know it word for word, but it's something like, don't get emotionally involved, don't show emotion, you shouldn't have emotion, you shouldn't treat someone like a friend, you shouldn't be friendly. That's basically what he says, wow. as a prison officer. As a prison officer, you need to be devoid. Is that now still? Yeah, it's fucking, That's in the they've rewritten manual. it, they've oh. rewritten it, yeah. Just recently, you need to be devoid of any emotion when dealing with people, we're dealing with prisoners. They put that in because of all the, you know, illicit relationships. It's gone fucking nuts, mate. You know, the corru the corruption, mm. you know, inappropriate relationships, whatever that may be, they've actually written it into the policies that you should be devoid of any emotion. You can't be devoid of any emotion. Can you imagine if they'd have done that now? I wouldn't be fucking sat here with you. I'm getting that. That's actually got getting me angry. <laughs> well, don't don't get angry. No, it's actually getting me frustrated because it was like, imagine if Mr. Goodridge or Paul Lewis or Claire as well. I didn't mention her last time, and I should have done. You did mention Claire. Did I? My yeah, personal you did. officer. Yeah, you said she did a lot for you. Right, I Mr. Goodridge. I can't remember his yeah, name. Bless him. Paul Lewis. Paul and... Lewis. Yeah, but you did mention her, Claire. Right. You said she she was really good. She helped you with a lot of problems and stuff I like that. I forgot to mention her. No, I you felt, mentioned her. I felt bad. No, no. Um, so imagine if them three hadn't. If they'd have just done what all the other prison officers and prisons done, that when I went to a new prison, and it's true, you said it the other day as well, and I was like, wow, when I used to go to different prisons and they'd send me further and further away from home, because that was the only way they could punish me, Sam, weren't it? Yeah. Send me as far away from Lancashire yep. as they could, because they couldn't give me extra time, they couldn't do anything else. Um, but every time I went to a new prison, I was met in reception with the nasty ones, the big ones, and they'd be like, uh, doing on your antics here and we won't stand for it in this prison and we do things different and we'll come down on you that used to justify me to go fuck off all right then because then i had all this anger so i was like thank you for that if paul goodridge hadn't come in that day and done what he'd done i wouldn't be sat here now i wouldn't be sat in this car i'd still be i'd probably be in a nice security prison still somewhere just to let you guys know if this is the first thing you've seen with sean was, it, was he a governor, manager? No, he was a manager, he was a block, uh, wing manager, uh, was, unit manager. He was a unit manager who basically went to Sean and said, you know, you're a troublesome lad or whatever, but I'm going to give you a chance, and that's what he did. Yeah. Yeah, go back and watch the video and you'll, you know, you'll get the story, you know, but that's effectively what he did. Um, and then, obviously, he went and committed suicide a few months later and... But Paul and Claire, and other ones, but Paul and Claire, Paul's been my main one. He's still my best mate now. Um, I love him to bits because he's straight talking. He's like you. If I'm saying something that's not right, he'll just, you know, he challenges me. And that's what I need to be challenged. You are straight, straight talking's always best, isn't it? Saying it how it is or whatever. None of this I'm... cuddling and it's all going to be okay. No, you, you know what I mean? You, yeah. Well, 
You waffle a bit. I, I, that's what I used to do. You know, if it needs it sometimes. Somebody, you know, a lad who's gonna. What do you think, Miss Sam? Do you think I'm gonna get a three or four? No, you're not, lad. You know, you're looking at eight or nine. Yeah. I, I couldn't judge sentencing. No. But you know, they're the sort of conversations you had. What do yeah. you think about this? And I just used to say, as it is. Well, at, at best, you know, uh, your missus might stay with you. However, you know, just, just if if they want honesty and people inevitably aren't happy when you're honest and they don't get the answer you want. However, they would respect you afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, you don't like what you hear, but usually when you don't like it, it's because there's some truth behind it. Yeah, of course it is, you know, thanking you later yeah. for delivering bad news or whatever. Thank, yeah. You know, thanks for being honest, thanks for... It's the best way to be, honesty is the best policy. Another one from me, Nan. Um, you know, like, like yourself, like we said, you know, um, p people are always going to judge you or whatever. However, the vast majority of people will make their own mind up about you. Mm -hmm. Irrespective of what anyone else says, yeah. you know, people can knock you, they'll make their own mind up about yeah. you. So, uh, I miss me man a lot. And the, the things she used to, I'm no doubt, that my big nan, who I can mm -hmm. remember her mum, used to say the same things to her, like my granddad. And, you know, it, it is true. Kids now, I'm sure, the, the biggest problem with kids is the, the worrying or thinking what other people are thinking about, yep. how they're going to be judged. Yeah. And it causes problems. Yeah. This, again, it goes back to that social media. So when I was a kid, we didn't have it. I didn't even have internet. The first time I ever had internet was when I got out of prison. I'd never had internet on my phone. Do you know, I was like, and everything now is like, when I used to go to school and for, in the first year I got bullied um, and I'd go home. But when I went home, that were it until I went back the next day and it happened, it was going on for about six months. Um, but now kids can be bullied in school. They go home, they've got the phone, they've got their Xbox, they've got the laptop. They cannot get away from it, and everything is body image, clothing, fashion. Yep. And that's all from big, big corporations by putting them out there. Well, they're getting so many mixed messages. Yeah. You know, you've got people who are morbidly obese on social media saying it's fine to be like me. Yeah. And you've got people who should be in hospital, you know, because mm. they're that malnutrition saying it's fine to be like me, and kids are just... They're, yeah. Yeah, it's like they're being trained to think certain ways. And well, I think they just worry. Yeah, they worry. I think yes. they're worrying about everything, but also I don't think they get realistic expectations. In what in what way? Well, you know, they think uh, when they leave school, college or uni, mm -hmm. they're going to leave, get a high-paid job, get an apartment in the city with the little dog, yeah. uh, car in the parking space, and everything will be fine and hunker dory. You know, um, it's good to have them dreams, but there's a lot, lot yeah, of work. Yeah, of course, to, it's good. There's to a have lot dreams. of fucking work to go to do that, though, isn't there? And that's what they don't realise. Oh, you see, it is. Sorry. No, no, no. You're right. There is a lot of work. No, I, I totally agree with you. It's having realistic. It's been prepared. Uh, that's my new word for kids now, yeah. not education, because people always say they go to school yeah. for education. Prepared. Being prepared and having realistic expectations. Yeah. Yeah, because like again, they see stuff on there and they go, oh, he's done that, I can be successful doing that. And I can, because they don't, they don't see what these people have had to go through to get where they were. And some of them hit it lucky, don't they? Yeah. Some of them of can be do. very lucky where somebody picks them up and they become famous. The chances of you being, you know, like a lot of these, you know, whether it's... I know what you mean. World champion, like like the boy who wants to be a boxer, and he can do that. But he's he's also got brains. Like he like school. I've got to say it because I'm just proud. His school report come the other day, amazing, really good. Got his got his um, sets for next year. What set he's going in? Set one. There's thirty kids in that in his year that is in set one, and he's into set one. Like, it's amazing, so it's like... 
Well, he's no got to use his, his feet on the floor, won't you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's an amazing kid. His manners. He doesn't go out. He doesn't cause trouble. He is is level-headed, and that's what I want to try and instill. That you've got to work hard. You have to work, even when you don't like it. it like I, hate, I don't hate my job. It's not the job I want to do, but I have to do it. And it's like I explained to him not so long ago. I said, "Look, you're very, very clever." You do your own work and do you know, do everything you need to do at school, you're going to be good. But you don't want to be like me at 37, working in a warehouse, and he's like, well, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. There is absolutely no, he, nothing. Do you know what? I'm, I'm going to say the same of him. Nothing. You're working. Yeah. And another thing my nan used to say, yeah, it's a lot easier to get a job when you're in a job. Yeah. You know, so if you're doing something you don't like and it's paying the bills, it doesn't stop you looking. No. No. You know, keep looking. Yeah. You know, it, it's like yourself. You know, if if you decide you and your lass that geography is the one, i.e., you want to move somewhere else, mm. then she starts looking for jobs there, and you yeah. start looking for jobs there, whatever. Yeah. You're both working. Yeah. You know, you both. You you could get a mortgage or whatever, and decide to. Yeah. The big decisions then. But it was so, more yeah. instilling in him that there is nothing wrong with what I do. But he is a smart young man, and that if he does everything right now, life's going to be a little bit well, easier than what it is. Like you say, you need me. to keep his feet on the yeah. ground about expectations and, you know, being realistic as well, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a good thing to have that bit of responsibility where, and that's what it is, I've got a bit more responsibility. I feel like I've got a purpose in life. And I didn't have that before. It's my favourite word. Purpose. Yeah, of course it is. We all need that. If you ain't yeah. got it, you're fucked. Yeah, so... Um, excuse me, this is Bert. Certainly. Are we getting a brew? Yeah. Let's go. I've enjoyed that chat. Well, is it over now? Uh, it is, so we've oh, had God. a brew, yeah. <laughs> Let's get a brew, then. Thanks for coming. I'll see you there. See you later.